there. We are recording. It is March 30th, Monday. Welcome, Crush Nation team call. Um, I hope everyone's doing good. Um, interesting times, strange times, I know. Um, we're not going to do recognition tonight because I want to uh, respect John's time and just really dive right into what he wants to share and his content and value and stuff like that. I will say though, um, and I've, I've mentioned this a few times on different calls and, and team calls and our chats and stuff like that, but I really, um, I think how, I don't want to, I don't know if the right word is how you handle the next month, six months, year, whatever, whatever this timeline or time frame that we have going on right now um, in the world. I do think though, and I've heard a few people say this, I really do believe that we are entering a period of time where everything's going to change, not only from a business standpoint, but from a cultural family, um, how we view things, gratitude, all those, all those things. I think, I think we're in a bit of a shift and I, from a business standpoint, I will say, and I'm not just talking about our company, I think in general, um, I think at the end of all this, whether it's six months, whatever, I think at the end of all this, you're going to see some really powerful leaders and people come out of what's happening right now. Like what we're going through um, globally, I think is probably going to create some of the strongest leaders you'll, you will see in the next 20 years, not in network marketing or beach body or anything like that. But I think just in general, I think this kind of difficulty and struggle really, um, I think it sharpens the knife for people. It sharpens that sword. It's like really the people who really want big things. This makes them evaluate the things they want. The other thing it does is, you know, and I talk about this a lot, guys, we're raised in this societal box a lot of times where we go to high school and we sit in our counselor's chair and they tell us, what do you want to be when you grow up and who do you want to be? I really feel like what's happening now with, with layoffs and unemployment and all the things that are happening, I really believe people are going to start looking more at opportunities outside the box. I think that's what this is going to do for people. They're going to realize like, Oh, so my job as an employee actually isn't guaranteed. Like, cause that is the, that's, we get in that, that box, right. Of thinking that, and it's just, nothing's guaranteed guys. And I think multiple streams of income and revenue and all those things, I think it's huge. So, Let's, let's get to John. I'm really excited. Um, and I think I, John and I have never met, but we kind of, I know I connected with him through, uh, uh, Joe Arco and through the fitness community and stuff like that. And I, I, I dove in, I started watching YouTube videos and his podcast and stuff like that. And I was just like, John's just one of those guys that after about, it's like you go down the rabbit hole and after about 15, 20 minutes, I was just like, Whoa, I've been watching this guy for 25 minutes. I didn't even realize because he's just captivating and he speaks truth and authenticity. Um, his pod podcast is called Power of Progression. He is a life coach, world-renowned speaker. I mean, he's been on the stage, guys, with like Tony Robbins and E.T. Um, we actually had Trent Shelton on our team call about a month ago. Um, and I'm just, I'm just so excited, John. We've never officially formally met, but um, I'll stop talking so they can uh, I share a little bit about your story because I know you, like, like most success stories, you've had your share of struggles and then we're going to talk about, you know, what everyone's going through in business and stuff like that. So I will pass it over to you, sir. Well, first off, man, thank you so much for the opportunity. Hopefully everybody's having an amazing night. Uh, you know, I'm so grateful to have this opportunity because there's, you know, what, 100 plus people on here. And the coolest part about what I do is, is the ripple effect of just, if I could change one of your lives tonight, what it will do for your kids and what it'll do for maybe your parents or your brother or your employees. Um, so I take this shit pretty serious. Um, and everything I do, I try to show up in my greatest self. Um, and I'll talk about that today, but, um, so Jamie, thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you guys for showing up. You know, he said he wasn't going to do recognition tonight and I'll do that for him. Um, I recognize every single person that showed up tonight. Um, I seen somebody said that they lost their full-time job. That could be a blessing. You know, uh, it, it's funny. I was actually paddleboarding. I live in Destin, Florida. I'm originally from Jersey. And I was paddleboarding the other day, and I saw this tree that was uprooted. I mean, it was, there was no way there's any roots left in the ground. And it was just sitting there. And I just thought about how 
that's kind of how we feel like right now, right? Like everything just got uprooted and now we kind of don't know what the next step is. But I want to tell you that there's a good chance that whatever got uprooted in your life was supposed to happen, right? And it's time for us to find the, uh, the opportunity in every obstacle that we have amongst us because with great obstacles like we have today becomes great opportunity, but it's the power of choice, which I'll dive into. So I'll give you a short, short clip of, of who I am and, and my backstory. So you guys kind of give a little uh, taste of, of my journey. Um, and, and, you know, Jamie's right. There, there, there absolutely has been a lot of struggle. And I think that's the only way to get to success. I always say that the curriculum for success is through failure and through adversity, not around it. Um, and, and I learned to pay respects to my obstacles now because of what I went through. You know, growing up, I, I had a, uh, a great love in, in my family. My parents loved me, but they made bad decisions. Anybody know anybody like that? Like they're good people, but they make bad decisions. And so their bad decisions were drugs. And that overrided anything else, whether it's bills or, or really paying attention to me. Uh, I mean, in fifth grade, I probably went to school three times. Like that's, that's kind of how the focus was. It was definitely not shifted on me. But it's not really our, our, our fault what happens to us and what we get brought into but it's our responsibility to change it, right? We've heard that before. And around 12, I didn't decide to change it. I decided to continue that path and continue that self-destruction. And I got into drugs um, and, and I remember trying to fit in everywhere. You know, I got go hang out with the jocks and try to fit in, but I just didn't feel right. I go hang out with the musicians and try to fit in and just didn't feel right. And, and I kept trying to find my place. Well, my place, fell on top of me basically because I was really good at partying and fighting. And so as a human, we have a human need called acceptance. We all search for it. And I found it in a place that didn't empower me, but because it was a label and that's all I was looking for, I wrote that acceptance and I wrote it and I wrote it and I, and I did whatever I can to amplify it. Because as humans, guys, we follow through with who we believe we are most. Like if you're sitting there right now and you're telling me that you're a night owl, you will do everything you can to prove to me that morning suck. It's just the way we're wired. And so this label was put on me and, and I accepted it because I just wanted to be accepted in love because I didn't really get that at home. And unfortunately, my addiction wasn't to, to just drugs. It was gossip. You know, it, it, was, it was violence. It, it was making bad decisions. And I started couch hopping because my parents lived in a motel. And I would fight drugs, fight drugs. And unfortunately, I landed in jail. And as I was sitting in jail, you think it would all change, but it didn't. I got out and I was living in a motel and I met my now wife. And I tried to go back into self-destruction mode. You know, I tried to do whatever I could to push her away so I can go back into that lifestyle that even though it didn't benefit me, it's, it's where I felt like I belonged because that's where people appreciated and they accepted me, which was really BS in the end of it. And so fast forward a few months and a few years, I meet this guy named Pat Nekarado, great Christian man. He says, John, I'm going to show you how to make a lot of money and make people a lot of money. See, he owned a sales and marketing firm. And so I agreed. And he said, but there's two things. A, I need you to start making better decisions and change your life because the life you're living is not the life you're supposed to live. I agreed. And he said, the next thing is add value to people outside of this business with the value I provide. And I said, yes, of course. But the only reason I said yes is because I wanted one thing. Anybody know what that is? Money. I just wanted money. Like I was so income driven because income solved all my problems for so long. So I thought, and so two years go by and I was making strides, right? Like making a little bit uh, of progression. I was definitely making a lot of money compared to what I was making. I was changing lives but I wasn't happy with myself. And it all changed in October 28th, 2012. See, I lived in New Jersey and, and, and we lived on a barrier islands. And so I was surrounded by water and we got hit with Hurricane Sandy. And I just moved out of our apartment. I was about 500 square feet to our first home, about 700, 800 square feet. And we rented a nice little one story house. And it was eight o'clock at night. I remember playing Monopoly in, in my bedroom with my parents because I had to take them from their motel. And I could visualize it and I could hear it still. This trickle of water just came flooding into my house. And I was so surprised because 
an hour ago, I was outside and it was just like windy. It wasn't raining. So I got up, I walked through the water and I opened up the doors and there it was. It was just four or five feet of water just ripping through our streets. And there's boats upside down. There's jet skis upside down. We got docks flying into our house. And so I did what John Marone would do back then. And instead of putting his family up, I put my furniture up, right? Like selfish as hell. But that's just my mentality back then. It was, I already just paid for all this furniture. Let's put it up. Well, we get everybody up into the attic. And I remember the, the attic ladder being down. And I just see it climbing rung by rung by rung. And I hear, boom, boom, boom. And it's the tree hitting the roof. And the water's rising. I looked back at my family. And I'm soaking wet. It's October, New Jersey. And I said a word I never used in this context. And I said, what kind of impact have I made? See, I, I, like, I, what, what, what have I done? Like, I came, I partied, but like, what true impact have I made? What legacy have I made? I, I, I couldn't even come up with one in that moment. And I said, if I get out of here, I would lead impact first, income second for the rest of my life. We got rescued and I was sitting in a shelter. And this is where it all changed. I said, okay, I made this contract to myself. I, I, I made this agreement that I'm going to change my life and I could change others, but I don't know how. There it was. Saying I don't know what I don't know was my biggest opportunity to grow. Guys, I had to shed the ego. I, I, I had to shed this ego that, that I know everything. I, I had to shed this ego of like, oh, you're telling me and giving me feedback. It's probably because you don't like me. I had to shed it all. And so I did that and I spent the last decade really digesting and investigating the best minds in the world. You know, figuring out who's the best at, at, at being a father, who's the best at running a business. And I just kept diving into these people's businesses and their lives and uncovering what tools they used. And fortunately enough, I changed my life and, and went from living on the streets to jail to an addict. And I live in beautiful Destin, Florida now with amazing things. I experience so many things. I speak on stages every single month. Obviously not the last two months, but every single month. And it's just so beautiful to me because I get an opportunity to sit here in front of 125 people. I was just on a call with a few hundred people. And it's just so cool because you guys are here. And the first thing I need you to know is that whatever I tell you, it's only because I, I know you need to hear it, but you may not want to hear it. And, and, and it's coming from a place of love and it's coming from a place of value. And so that's my story in a nutshell. I, I've taken my addiction and I realized that it's not a bad thing. Being an addict is not a bad thing. Now, everybody on here is an addict. I don't care who you are, where you come from. You're an addict of something. You're an addict of watching that favorite TV show. You're an addict of maybe eating. You're an addict of working out, right? You're an addict of sex. I don't care what it is. You're an addict. We have these addictive genes. And so with these addictive genes, we could actually use it to empower us. So I, I used to take that energy of addiction and put it towards all this negative stuff. And I used to have people come up to me and maybe you guys know some addicts or maybe you were one and, and they say, oh, you're an addict. Oh, I know somebody that was an addict. My cousin's an addict. Oh, I'm a recovering addict. They say this somber thing, not realizing that we have to become addicted to creating the ultimate, ultimate version of us and all six equities in order to get to the life that we want. We got to become obsessed with it. Not just about making money, but about being the best mother, about being the best leader. And so that's what I've done, taken my addiction and I flipped it. I flipped it. What I want to talk to you guys about tonight, I want to walk you guys through how to get certainty. Raise your hand right now if you feel a little bit uncertain of what's going on. Have a little uncertainty. We all do. It's, 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 this, is a, this is a human need. I talked about acceptance before, but certainty is a human need. You can't get away from it. Now, some people need it more than others, but we all need it. It all needs to be fed, right? And so during this time, it's crazy because you guys raise your hand that you don't have certainty. The reason you don't have certainty, if I ask every one of you, it's because of, I don't know what's going on with the coronavirus. I don't know what's going on with my job. I don't know what's going on with this and that. And that right there tells me that you don't truly know what certainty means because certainty is the things that you can control. You cannot, you cannot ask yourself to try to be certain in things you do not control. Let me repeat that. You cannot create certainty off of things you do not control. You're setting yourself up for massive disappointment. 
you've done it before, right? I mean, maybe you started dating that guy or that girl. And you're like, I know this is them. This certainty, I got it. And then they did you wrong. And then now the uncertainty that you can't trust anybody hits you, right? Or, or maybe that job that you're certain this is going to be it. And it just wasn't what it was. Now the uncertainty is back. The coolest thing about certainty is that you can control it. See, our circumstances, we can't control. So let's stop trying to find certainty in circumstances that we cannot control. This will change your life. When you stop trying to find certainty in things you cannot control, and you start finding it in the things that you can control, you start finding it in your daily habits. You start finding it in, in the people you surround yourself with. You start finding certainty in the things that you truly have control over, your mindset, your perspective, your self-awareness. All these things we'll dive into in a little bit. But when you truly make that shift of saying, the circumstances I cannot choose, right? I cannot choose what's going on with the government or what's going on with unemployment. or I can't choose. Like, that's going to happen. And you let go of all the external circumstances, you truly can control the internal processes. And that's how computers run, right? That's how our bodies and our mind run. It's internally. But every time you start trying to pull in something that you're uncertain of and you don't know what's going on, you start putting your own virus into your own mind. You start putting this, this, this fear. And I don't want you to walk in fear. I want you to run forward in faith. This is the time to run forward in faith, not retreat in fear. Because when you walk in fear, you cannot see the opportunities that are in front of you. Guys, I'm telling you because I know I walked in fear so long in my life. Like fear of people judging me, fear of my bank account was going to go to zero, fear of all this, right? My parents passes my future. And when I was walking in that fear, I missed so much opportunity, so much opportunity that could have directed me to, to the path of my life that I'm currently on way faster. Now, yeah, it all happens for a reason. But when you walk in fear, you don't see opportunity. And you also attract other things that bring fear. And then your mind starts going a thousand miles a minute, right? 75,000 thoughts a day in your head. It's like, now how do I control that? Because the negative is way heavier than a positive. And you turn on the news or you turn on Facebook or you turn on Instagram and it's nonstop negative, right? Yeah, you see some funny TikTok stuff and like, that's cool. Takes your mind off it for like five seconds, but then you get back to the real world. So I want you to understand the things that you could control. Like that's the coolest part is you can create that certainty. And you can find the opportunity in any obstacle. And I'm going to talk about some opportunities right now. Then I'm going to dive into what I've created called the success formula. So opportunities right now. I think it's, it's a beautiful time to connect and create. Write those things down. Connect and create. Like I'm connecting with my family like I've never done before. And mind you, I have a great relationship with my family. Like, I play with my daughter all the time. I hang out with my wife. But the way I'm connecting now, it's way more in the present moment. The, 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 the connection with, with my clients, the connection with people that I've never even spoke to before, like it's time to truly connect, guys, and then create. You guys all are business owners. Every person on here is a business owner. Like it's simple as that. This is Jen Inc. This is Jackie Inc. Lisa Inc. This is your business right? And you're the CEO. You're the CEO. So what are you creating to where whenever this ends, because I'm here to tell you, it's going to end. Don't know when, but it's going to end. But it's what are you creating now? What content are you creating? What book are you writing? What books are you reading? How are you creative right now? Because I'm going to tell you something. Those, Jamie kind of talked about it before. Those who are creating right now, those who are, are, are taking their life to another level while everybody else is Netflix and chilling, those are the people when the door is open, those people will be the people who make more money and create the experiences they want to create. You can't sit back right now and put your foot on the brake. You can't. 
you have to put your foot on the gas pedal and say, I have no other choice because when I come out of this in two months, three months, a week, whatever it is, and the, 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 the world sees me again, they're not going to recognize me because I've spent the last two months, three months, week, whatever it is, building myself into a creature that nobody can recognize because I am unstoppable, I'm powerful, way more than I was before. So coronavirus, yes, I know you're taking lies from us, but thank you for giving me mine back. Thank you. Because when I get mine back, I can help so many others. When I, when, when I walk in my power, I can help others find their power. When, when, when I become unstoppable, oh, man, my kids, they're going to see it. They're, they're going to feel it. My, my employees, they're going to feel it. When I walk in that, others will too. But if I don't, others will too. That's scary. That's scary. You know, you're a leader. Doesn't matter who you are. If you have kids, don't have kids, anybody on your team, it doesn't make a difference. You're a leader. Leader is not a, a job promotion. Leader is not something you put on your business card. Leadership is a lifestyle. And it's what you do in the dark that makes you shine the brightest in the light. And I sacrifice sleep in the morning. Why? What, how come I wake up at five? Because I like it? Hell no, I don't want to wake up at five every morning. My bed is way more comfortable than working out and doing abs. Like, promise you. Like, especially when you don't see your abs coming in, you're like, okay, that bed is definitely way more comfortable. Like, I'm telling you. But I do it because I understand that I'm going to sacrifice my two hours in the morning for my stillness, for, for my gratitude, for my workouts, for, for my personal development. Because guess what happens? Now, when my daughter wakes up, I can eat breakfast with her because I just put three hours of work in. And I can't replace that. I cannot replace that. Because guess what? Today is the last day that she'll be this age. And tomorrow and the next day. And if I'm not there to see her do one of the first things for the first time, say a word. Like, I mean, today I'm, I'm in here working, but I heard her like, say, oh, my God, Panda. And like, wow, how incredible. Like I'm able to sit home and actually hear that. Are you paying attention to those things? Are you worried about tomorrow? Because tomorrow's problems ruins today's peace. I was listening to Stephen Furtick before. Great, great uh, pastor. And he was saying, uh, you know, it's, it's funny because God is supposed to, and it's not like you're getting on a whole God trip, but God is supposed to, you know, help with tomorrow's problems so that you could, you can go ahead and have peace today. So he's asking like, yo, let me get my job back. Stop worrying about tomorrow's problems. Like be here today. And so just, it's a great opportunity to be here today. So another thing I want to help you guys out with is understanding the opportunity of staying sharp. You know, staying sharp because we do have to innovate. Let's be real. We got to innovate. You know, there's, there's, there's a lot of things shifting. And the people that are innovating are the people that are going to be the ones getting out on top. It's like 2008, right? 2008, the market crashed. A lot of people got broke. But guess what? A lot of people got rich. Why? Because they were innovating. But they were only innovating because they were sharp. What I mean is that they stuck to their morning rituals. They didn't allow the outside circumstance to pull them away and be like, well, I usually wake up and go to work at 8 a.m. or drive to school the kids at 8 a.m. Um, so I'm going to just sleep in, right? No, you cannot be doing that right now. Now is so much more important to be on your, on, on your rituals. Let's get a, a, a hand raised real quick. Who here has fallen off their morning rituals? And be honest, it's all good. I did for a while, okay? So I know some people want to raise their hand, but, you know, they, they don't want to be called out. It's all good. I did for a bit, right? I ran a mastermind in Cabo recently. And as soon as I came back, I flew my mom down and then she left and then coronavirus showed up. And so I was like, oh, you know, I'll just work my way into getting back into my ritual. I was in Cabo for two weeks. And, and I realized, wow, first off, you know how hard it is to get back into a ritual? <laughs> like, you know how hard that is? So let's not fall off. But the importance of it, the importance of your morning rituals, it's actually not just for your morning. It's for tomorrow. It's for the next day, right? It, 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 it's for all the other things because write this down. Your habits create your future. It's plain and simple. But the, the, the issue comes down to is you're allowing your circumstances to dictate your habits. Think about that. You and I, we all know our habits create our future. Like you are not going to get rich, fulfilled, all the things you want in your life by sitting on the couch, eating Doritos and doing nothing, right? 
We know this. So we know we got to have certain rituals to really create the future we want. But yet you allow these circumstances to come in and say, you know what? Coronavirus is here. I don't have a gym, so I'm not going to work out. We cannot allow our circumstances to dictate our habits because when they do that, they dictate your future. And when they do that, you, you look at your family and saying, I allowed something that's not even in my control to control me. I allowed it something that's not even in my control to control me. Like what? But it's all good. We're in this together. And so that's why I'm here is to show you guys and give you guys a little bit of an opportunity to see how important it is to stay sharp, to stay sharp, find a way to make it happen. Now, I just want you to get 1% better. Just 1% better. Let me tell you a quick story. So, and I'm not going to get all the facts right, just let you know. Uh, so there is this, there is this uh, like cross, uh, cross country biking team. They were horrible. Like they were the worst. Uh, they were so bad that Trek Bikes said, please do not ride our bikes on national television because you embarrass us. <laughs> That's how bad it was. And so they brought this new coach in and the coach is like, all right, guys, in three years, we are going to win the world tour. And everyone's like, Wow, they got a crackhead to go ahead and be our coach. Cool, cool, cool. Like, what? That's not happening. They're like, this, there's no way. He's crazy. And he said, yeah, not only that, we're going to win the world tour in three years with every single person in this room. Every person in this room. And they're looking around, and they definitely don't buy it. And they said, all right, coach, how are we going to do that? And he said, we're just going to get 1% better every day. 1%. So they brought in uh, pillows for everybody, 25 pillows. Here you go, Kim, here you go. Uh, you know, Jackie, here you go. Jen, here you go. Tristan, here you go. Take on these 25 pillows, lay on them, and tell me which one you like best, where you get the most sleep. Okay, next day, here's 25 bike seats, same thing. Then the next week, let's paint the wall. Let's paint the wall 25 different colors until we feel like which one's really like vibrant and keeps us alive. And they did this, and they did this, and they did this. Three years later, same team, they won the world tour three years in a row and broke a bunch of records. So you got to ask yourself, how does a team that is so bad, that's embarrassing to the biking community with the same exact people win three years later, like three years, that's not long, three years later and break records 1% better every day. So whatever you're failing at right now to, to, to stick to, maybe waking up early. Tomorrow, wake up 15 minutes earlier. Next day, five minutes. Another 10 minutes. Maybe you're having trouble reading or, or listening to an audible, whatever it is for personal development. Read 10 pages tomorrow. And then five pages. Whatever it might be. But just promise yourself you'll get 1% better. Because when you compound that, what happens? Right? When you compound that, what happens? Success happens. So just 1% better. And, and don't be perfect. That's one, one other thing. Like perfection kills progression, right? Perfection kills progression. And that's what like success is. To me, success is just progression. You guys all help people lose weight, right? You help people not just lose weight, but this is such an opportune time for you. Uh, I was talking to Jamie about this because, you know, when people come to you and they lose weight, do you realize that losing weight's not really the goal? Losing weight's not the goal. Losing weight's just a vehicle to feel an emotion, right? Like to, to, to get their confidence back so they could go ahead and, and sell more in their job, get their confidence back so they feel like they're, they're, they're worthy when they're around their, their husband or their skinnier friends, like feeling good so they could play with their kids again and get down on their level so they could be a good mother and they could feel like a good father. Like, it's so much more than losing weight. It's all the losing weight is a vehicle to drive to an emotion. And it's you that can get them to that emotion. So now you might be saying, yeah, but you know, they don't want to be spending money. I don't want to take advantage of them. I get it. I get it. You're spitting fear all day. And I understand you care about people. So you don't want to feel like you're, you're stepping over someone's boundaries and, and taking advantage of them during this time. If you look at it that way, yes, you're, you're, you're absolutely going to take advantage of them. But if you know the, the truth behind the truth, which is by them staying sharp themselves, and we just talked about it, by them staying sharp themselves and, and sticking to a routine, 
when the floodgates open, you're going to be a little speck in that person's journey on why they're ahead of everybody else. This is not a, a time for you to feel like you're taking advantage of somebody. This is a time for you to help way more people because what, what's happening? You're sitting there eating chips, eating ice cream. Like now is such a hard time to stay in shape. It is. I'm going to do that works out five days a week. I'm telling you, I, I've had more carbs in the last two weeks and I don't know how long because it's just easy, just easy. But the thing about easy is that it creates a hard life. The thing about doing things that are easy creates a hard life. I'm going to give you guys simple things, right? To the hard obstacles you have. So I, I don't want anybody on here to, to, to leave without at least hearing that. Like you guys aren't taking advantage of people, but you got to know your own worth first. You can't try to sell anything unless you're confident about the product, unless you're confident about the results. You and I both know it works if you work it, right? So there's that fact. And know that you can't help a thousand people if you sell a thousand people. There are going to be people that fall off. It's just the process. But if you don't reach these people, I, mean, I just want to drive this into your head. If you don't reach these people and, and, and they gain 20 pounds, 30 pounds, and then all of a sudden, they're, 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 maybe their marriage goes to waste because they're not happy with each other the way they look. They're happy with themselves, right? Maybe they're, they're, it's affecting their confidence, so now their sales are dropping, all because you were scared to pick up the phone and call and help. I would take ownership of that and say, that's on you. Because everything you do is bigger than you. And when you figure that out, you're going to want to help more people. I promise. All right, I want to show you guys something real quick. So I'm going to share my, sc my screen real quick. I think I could do that from here. First off, you guys getting value so far? You guys getting value? Yes? Boom. Thank you for sticking with me. All right, let's uh, – boom, 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 boom. I don't want to do that. Let me share my screen here. All right, so everybody can see this. Good, good, good. You guys could all see this? Cool. All right, this is what I call success and progression formula. Super simple. We're going to do a little, <clears throat> do a little uh, pen to paper here too. So you guys are going to do a little activity with me. This is how success works, guys. This is it. It's pretty simple. Pretty simple. Once again, it, it, it's, it's something we have to really pay, pay close attention to. So look at the words and thoughts, bottom left, right? Words and thoughts. Words and thoughts are where it all begins. I'm going to leave you guys with that. Most of you guys are all over here. Results. I just want results. I just want results. Some of you guys are here. Okay, I'm going to take enough action to get enough results. Some of you guys, most of you guys are failing here. So this is how you create success. The words and thoughts that you say to yourself are the most important thing. Because it goes like this. Results get driven off of what? Action. Action gets driven off of a nice little pen action. I like that. Um, action gets driven off of emotion. And emotion gets driven off of thoughts. The most impactful conversation you could have is the one with yourself. People ask me all the time. You know, I ran a lot of sales companies. John, teach me how to convert leads better. I could guarantee you I could teach you how to convert leads better, but it starts by converting a better conversation with yourself. That where, that's where it begins. That's where it begins. So if you have these, these, these negative thoughts, right? if you have these negative thoughts, and then all of a sudden you're like, okay, I, I need to take action. But first in between there, you have a belief, right? So you have a negative thought. Is your belief, let's, let's go to the chat box here. Where is it at? Okay, if you have a negative thought, a self-doubt, something that's disempowering you, because remember, 75,000 thoughts a day, zoom, 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 zoom. If you're having a negative thought, is your belief more or is, or is it higher or is it lower in yourself? And whatever you want to do, whether it's making calls or anything, right into the chat, okay? If you have negative thoughts, boom, 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 lower, lower, lower. I think someone messed up, <laughs> lower. If you have negative thoughts, your belief is lower, okay? Your confidence is lower. So if your confidence is lower, is your action higher or lower? Put into the chat. Yep, lower, lower, lower. Okay, 
Now, results, which is what creates success in the end and in, in income and impact, results with low action, are results higher or lower? Yep, now this is the crazy part. It's a cycle. Because when you have low results, now it happens to the words and thoughts that you have. They're even worse, right? They're even worse. So it looks something like this. All right, I'll, I'll do a little role play with you guys. <sighs> okay, I need to make some phone calls. I need to go ahead and, and, and get some people on my team. I don't know if I could do that. You know, my mom says this isn't like a real thing. Um, you know, people aren't going to want to talk to me. I don't know. Uh, okay, I'll just try a few phone calls. Okay, no, no, no one wants to do it. Okay, my results suck. I knew it. I knew they were wrong. I, I, see, my mom was right. I knew they were going to say no. And it just goes and over and over again. Your lack of results feed, feed the negative thoughts in your mind. Feed it. And then it's less belief, less action, less results. And it's this, this circle that keeps going over and over. Okay? So let's talk about negativity and, and, and the thoughts that you have in your head. Write down right now. Let's take 15 seconds. Write down in the last seven to 10 days. What are five words or five thoughts that are negative that you've had about yourself, right? That you had about yourself. Maybe it's uncertainty. Maybe it's you have low self-worth. I just want you to write them all down. Put them on, put the pen to paper. On one side of the paper, put what are five things you've been saying to yourself that you know are disempowering. You know that they discourage you. I'm not talking about whether you believe them or not. I'm just talking about what you say to yourself. Someone says, I'm sensing a theme. There's always a theme. <laughs> okay, take another 10 seconds. Write it down. Another five seconds. What are five words or thoughts? Okay. Now, next to that, I want you to write down an emotion that that thought brings you or that word brings you. Right. Maybe it's, uh, you know, you're not worthy. Let's just say, uh, what's an emotion that it brings you. Maybe it's sad, right? Maybe it's disappointing. So five words, negative and, and one emotion that it brings you every time. Take 10 seconds. Five seconds. Okay, so now you have the negative words or thoughts and you have the emotion that it brings you. Looking at that, ask yourself truly, thinking that and feeling that, are you ever gonna get the results you want? Are you ever gonna create the life that you want if you continue to think and feel that way? You're not, you guys aren't. And that's what I want to help you guys with right now. Because the cool part is, is a thought is just a thought. A thought is just a thought. And you have the power of choice to choose your thought patterns. Every single day when you wake up, there's no reason to wake up on the wrong side of the bed. Because if you do, that was just a thought pattern that you decided to choose. Right? So let's choose different thoughts. Now, the cool thing, like I said, is that we can go the other way with it. So if I tell you you're beautiful, I tell you, man, you're strong. You know what? You're, you're confident. You're going to crush this call. You're going to make so much money. Man, look, and I just keep feeding you all this positive reinforcement. Where's your belief go, guys? Put it into the chat. Up or down? Where's your confidence go if I'm feeding you this positive reinforcement? Up, up, sky high, sky high, up, up. Boom. Perfect. So now you have this great confidence and you have great belief. Where's your action, up or down? Up or down? Up, right? All the way up. And then your results, we know what happens there, right? When your action's up, results are up. Now here's the cool part. The words come into your head and you're like, I knew I could do it. Yes, man, this is just for me. This is perfect. I can't wait, I'm gonna help so many more people. I'm excited. I'm gonna be able to, to provide for my family. Belief goes up even more, action goes up even more. So we just did the, the, the negative side of things. Now I want you to write down just three, three words or phrases that you or somebody reinforced into your mind the past seven days that were powerful, positive, empowering. 
What are three words somebody has said to you or you said to yourself that are positive, powerful, empowering? Write them down. Another five seconds. Okay, now next to that, remember before you did the, the negative words and then you did uh, what emotion it brought you? Well, now you have the positive words. Now let's figure out what emotion does that bring you? What emotion does it bring you when you hear those words about you? When someone told you that you're worth it, someone told you that you're a rock star, or someone told you, hell, great job. What emotion does it bring you? Happy, joy, worthy. Take 10 seconds. Five seconds. All right. So you wrote it down. Now look at those things. Look at those words. Look at that emotion. Do you think that your action, that your results are going to be where it needs to be? Of course. So you ask John, well, how do I, I mean, okay, I get it. My thoughts create my emotions. My emotions create my actions and my actions create my results. Okay. Most of you guys keep paying attention to the wrong thing. You keep paying attention to the wrong, what I call key performance indicator. Let's start having better conversations with ourselves. It's the most impactful one you can have. And let's be self-aware in our thoughts. I'm going to stop this share and we're, we're wrapping up here shortly, but I need you to be self-aware in your thoughts. I, I'm not that disciplined guys. I'm not. I, I, Yes, I have my habits. Yes, I stick to them, but not because I'm disciplined to my habits as much as I'm disciplined to the self-awareness of catching a negative thought before it cultivates into its own life. And that's what you need to do. When you feel that negative thought, laugh at it. Say, that's no, that's the old version of me. That's something that somebody else put on me. That's not really me. And you have to do that daily. Because here's the thing, the way our minds work, the more it fires, the more it wires. The more it fires, the more it wires. You know, I was talking on a podcast earlier about how I was selfish for so long. He's like, oh, okay, so when you made that decision, it all changed? I said, hell no. Like, I was selfish for 20 plus years. My mind was wired over and over again to be selfish in so many different situations. It wasn't like, boom, and all of a sudden I'm like perfectly cured of being selfish. It took years. And that's because I started to recalibrate my mind, right? So it's not going to be like you get rid of these negative thoughts and you're never going to, you know, live in them again. No, it's just let's take action on being self-aware of that thought process, stop it, and create a new one that empowers you, that serves you, that, that, that brings you to where you want to go. Guys, hear me out. Life is way too short. Life is way too short. As you're taking your current breath, somebody's taking their last, right? We all know somebody that died way too long or way too early. And now you're sitting here and, and, and you're asking yourself, am I worthy? Can I do this? When they wish they just had an opportunity to do it, but yet they're no longer here. Let that be your why for one day. Somebody else that you know should still be on this earth. I, you know, I, I, I talk about my why a lot. You know, you guys have all heard it. I'm sure you guys heard, you know, uh, start with why, You've seen all the books. And, and, and why should be deep-rooted for sure. But you could also have momentary whys, right? Like you could have a why for like in three months, you want to buy this certain thing that creates a certain emotion. That's fine. But without, and hear me loud and clear and write this down, without a strong why, your consistency will die. It will, and your first why is always a lie. Your first why is always a lie. I can tell you right now, my why is my daughter. But it's not going to be enough, that one thing of saying, it's my daughter, to wake me up every day at 5 o'clock in the morning, to uh, it's 8 o'clock right now, you know, uh, my time. It's not going to be enough. It's just not. Not anything to do with her. It's just the way that we are wired as humans. So your why should make you cry. It cannot be your first why. You have to go deeper. You have to. In this time of uncertainty, I hope that I provided 
some clarity on how to get certainty. But I want to leave you with this. Yeah, then I'll open up for a Q&A if you guys want. But, you know, it, it, I always think about legacy. I always think about legacy. I always think about what it is. Um, and I always thought it was, it was the dash, right? Like you go up to it by grave and it's the dash. I believe it's that. You know, Trent's a boy of mine, and, and you know, we always chop it up about going to graveyards and looking at the dash, and, and I, I do believe that. But I, I stopped living that. And let me tell you why. So I was at a speaking engagement, actually with Trent, and I was doing a Q&A, and I got this question. And it was actually from my mom, who's the first time she ever saw me speak. And she said, what is legacy to you? And I started speaking about when I die, I want people to feel this and feel this and feel that. Then I realized, wow. Why am I waiting until I die to feel my legacy? Every time I leave a room, I, I, I want to make people feel like they have hope. I want to give tools so they can go out and implement to create impact in their life. I, I want to, every time I get off a phone call, hopefully give that person value. Whenever I see somebody in the streets, I hope when they passed me, if their day was going bad and I gave them a, a smirk or a smile that it brightened up their day and they got that negative thought out of their mind. I want to live my legacy daily. Because I want to feel it. It feels good when you feel good. And so live your legacy daily. Don't wait until you die. Don't wait. And whatever's holding you back from whatever it is that you want to create in this life, whether it's with Beachbody or whatever else it is, whatever's holding you back, you have to look at it and say, you will no longer have the stranglehold on my happiness. Because when you do lay your head down to rest for your final day and you lay in that grave, I want you to envision your kids coming up to that grave. I want you to envision the people you love coming up to them. And they're either going to say one of two things. Man, Kim, she, she did everything she could. She, she, she overcame obstacles. She put it all out there. She, she created as much as she could. She lived her life. Or they're going to say, Kim had so much more potential. Just don't understand why she didn't get out of her own way. And that scares me because how I live my life, our kids or people that watch us, they're going to live their life that way. Believe it or not, deep, deep down inside, that's how they're going to see it. So I want you to stop that thing that's ever been holding you back, that living a belief and no longer let it hold you back. There's so much opportunity within this obstacle right now, right now but it starts and ends with you. You must use your superpower. That is your perspective. When you can change your perspective on a dime, nobody can stop you. When you can see something that's negative and flip it into something positive and empower you, nobody can stop you. When you can change your perspective and you use that as your superpower and you activate it, you become unstoppable and create the life that you want. But it starts and ends with you but the coolest part is, is you're in control. Nobody else. So that's my spiel for the tonight, guys. I hope that you guys got value. Hopefully you guys uh, really took away some, some key points and some uh, things that you can take into your life, you know? Uh, I, I'm super passionate about this stuff because it's just, some people are like, man, you have a lot of energy. I, I, you know, I, I, I speak from pain and from struggle. Um, there's a lot of guys that don't, and you can kind of see that when they speak, right? And, uh, you know, I, I just want to hopefully change one person's life that changes a thousands from there. Um, but yeah, I'm going to open this thing up for, for, for a Q and a, if you guys want also at real John Marone is my Instagram at real John Marone. Uh, definitely hit me up on Instagram. I'd love to talk to you guys, hear your story and see if uh, I can empower you or serve you any way possible. You had Five pages of notes. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. You had people were like, when you were done, people were like, <laughs> it's clapping. I, I would, I would do it like a, like I'm already standing. So, you know, <laughs> I would mic drop. But. Wow. I mean, I have, yeah, I have a ton of notes that I'm not going to go through them all because it would be way too long. I think a couple things really stood out for me. Um, cause this is a, this is tangible when you look at numbers and because <laughs> with coronavirus, I think we're all looking at these numbers and growth rates and all that crap, but like 1% better, man. Yeah every day 1% that's like and that's tangible and doable because we can all get 1% better 
Yes. And that's yeah. the goal, Jamie. It's just get better today than you were yesterday. Um, you know, and, and it's huge. I want to ask you a quick question. I don't want to interrupt you, but before it leaves my mind, uh, the, these people here, uh, do they recruit and bring people onto their own team? Yep. 3.2 million last week. What on unemployment? Some of you might even be in this room. I'm just telling you there's a great opportunity to show somebody how to make more money right now. There's a great opportunity in it. It's not taking advantage. It's providing money for somebody to pay their bills. So 3.2 million, uh, just went on unemployment. That's just a great way to have a conversation, you know, with people that, you know, are probably on there. So I just want to throw that out there to them because, yeah. um, it's, it's, it's just a great opportunity, man. And John, I always talk about it in this business because no business is perfect. Um, but I come from the franchise world where we were franchisors and we had, we had people who were opening franchises and locations, spending a quarter million dollars, $250,000 to open their physical brick and mortar store, yeah. five, six, $7,000 a month in rent, employees buying product, having to sell it. Guys, in this business model, you like, like, you don't have to, you, you make a hundred percent of your income. You keep, you're not giving it to your upline or downline, or there's, you're not paying consulting fees, franchise fees. Our, our, our corp, our stores, our franchisees had to cut us a check for about $5,000 every month just to use our name. Yep. You, you keep a hundred percent of your income. And the, the whole other part of this guys is we actually provide a platform and a service for people that literally improves their life. You guys always hear me. I'm like, we're not out here selling vacuum cleaners. No offense if you've ever Bro, done. Oh, hold on. I sold Kirby's for like a good six weeks. <laughs> my grandma bought one, okay? The only one though. I was door knocking with a Kirby in my hand. Oh, but we, we like we get to do some pretty cool stuff here, guys. But that 1% thing, I just, it was like, it's such a tangible, doable thing. And like that, it's the compounding interest of that, right? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah, it, it, and like I said, I'm down to do open Q&A, man. If, if they, yeah. they want to do it, I'm doing it. I mean, I'm, I'm good. Guys, if you want to do it in the chat or take yourselves off of mute, let's ask some questions. Hey, John. Um, hi, Batu here. I want, up, to ask, I want to ask you about your morning routine. I'm just, just very curious how your morning – like you said you wake up at 5. I do too for the last year and some change mm -hmm. um, consistently. Um, and, and I've kind of, you know, got myself kind of sorted. But I'm curious about what your morning routine looks like. So first things first is no matter what time I go to sleep, I keep my promises to myself. Uh, that, that's something I had to learn pretty early. You know, like uh, we're all women or a man of our word, right? Like if we're going to, if we're going to love somebody, we want them to keep their word. It's just normal for us. Uh, but yeah, we have the worst time to keep our word to ourselves. So I, I'm trying to make you guys see that. Like, that's the first thing you need to do is keep your word to yourself. But yeah, so I wake up at five. I don't put my phone anywhere near me because if I do, um, I've been victim of this because sometimes I still do. It's snooze. Like it's just, it just hits snooze and that's always happened. So put the phone away from me, uh, wake up. And then, so I'm a big person in habit stacking and this is a huge, huge tool for you guys to use. Um, so habit stacking is simply the best way to stay consistent with your goals uh, and, and your habits. So when I'm in the shower and I shampoo my hair, I speak in gratitude every day. So my trigger is shampoo my hair right? And then I speak in gratitude and, and touch on that for a second. A lot of you may be speaking in gratitude, but don't do it to check the box off. You know, don't, don't say, okay, I'm going to say five things I'm grateful for today. 10 things. That, that, that's not the point of gratitude. Gratitude is even if you say one thing that fills you up with joy, that's what it's about. Right. And, and when I do my uh, conditioner, I speak in affirmations and it's the same thing. I have to visualize. So if you guys are doing your, your, visualization in the morning as, as well as your gratitude tip is is if you are not like truly feeling that joyous feeling just stop and say something in, in more uh in a deeper description example so if i say okay i'm grateful for my daughter and if i can't like see her feel her like really feel that joy because that's the point of gratitude i say i'm grateful for my beautiful daughter and the way she makes me smile even on some of my worst days and instantly like it's woo. I feel great. So habits stack in there. So gratitude, affirmations. Um, and then I have some stillness time where I'm just, just me, no technology. I, I usually don't touch my phone for the first two hours unless I have something really profound to say on Instagram. Um, <laughs> like I try to stay away from it. Um, and then I, I read for anywhere or listen to a book for 30 to 40 minutes. 
Uh, in my workouts, sometimes in the morning, sometimes not. Uh, and the reason being is because I, I am my most creative in the morning. And so because of that, sometimes when I'm working on something that's really intense, I need to be creative. I'll move my workout to the afternoon. So to lunch, because I, I don't want to waste that space on working out when I know it's just like a tight window of like from 630 to eight. I'm like, for some reason, really creative. If I use it while I'm working out, it's hard for me to get back into that mode. So I'll switch it. Um, I'll know what I'm working on the night before because I use a weekly progression plan, which Jamie, I could send it to everybody if you want. I create a progression plan. I'll see if I had it over here. Um, and what it is is simple. So we're made up of six equities of life. And most of the time, guys, we, we don't get success or, or fulfillment because we don't even know what it looks like. We don't even ask ourselves the question of what does success look like this week in my health? in my relationships, in my personal life, in my finances, in my business. And when you ask yourself that question, you get better results, right? Um, and so every single Sunday, I'll go through that and say, what's one to three things I could do this week to progress in each equity. And then every single day I wake up and I do this, which is my must crush list. So on here it has what's one thing to do for my business, career, or business, health, re, uh, finances, personal, spirituality, and relationship. I have eat the frog task on there, which is the first thing I do in the morning if it's something I've been putting off, like we all have an issue with. Um, I have my goal for the day, something that's tangible, make 10 dials, you know, set two appointments, whatever it is. And then something else that's important on here is conversations. Right now, everybody on this call, you are holding off on a conversation. You're holding off on having it. It could be your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, client you are holding off on having it. And that's because you're so tied to the outcome. And that's not a good place to be because the more you hold on to that, the more it actually weighs on you and affects the relationships that you have around you. You may not see it, but it's happening. And so every day I ask myself, who do I need to have a conversation with? And I just have the conversation without being tied to the outcome. I have to because it just releases so much stress and tension and allows me to put my energy into the things that are gonna get me closer to my goals. Um, and the coolest part is, is a lot of times, the outcome is nowhere near as bad as I probably would have thought it was and worked up into it in my mind, right? Um, and so that's, that's kind of my morning routine, brother. It's, it's two hours um, and, and I make sure I stick to it every single time. Um, but it switches up a little bit here and there, but I do have it stack a lot. Like I'll make sure that when I sit down, as soon as my butt touches the chair, I'm picking up a book because if I don't, I'm picking up email or I'm social media or whatever it is. So it's very like, okay, boom. Oh, one other thing I do um, is when my feet touch the ground, it's water I pound. So I have a thing of water next to me. And so as soon as my feet touch the ground, it's water I pound, right? Or some feet touch the floor, it's water I pour. And the reason why it's so important, because we all know that we get dehydrated overnight, right? When it's just dehydrating us. Well, when I drink my coffee in the morning or whatever it might be, it's actually like pulling more of, of the toxins and, 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 and creating more of a dehydration process in my body. So now I'm even more dehydrated. Well, guess what? When I'm more dehydrated, am I less or am I more focused? Way less. So as soon as I sit, as soon as I uh, touch my feet on the floor before I even get in the shower, I chug water to release some toxins and to create a little bit of focus and clarity. Um, and then the other thing I do, which you guys may or may not, want to do but i promise you it's so it's amazing is i take a uh i end my shower cold oh like ice cold. Ice cold. i i want to do this so bad dude it's well, awesome I, I do it john i do it in the mornings it's cold. it's it is it is amazing if i i'm gonna get one i'm getting uh an ice bath i was about to get one before the virus hit but i'm, I'm gonna be doing that as well dude, it, it it is it, it's insane man it's just it, what it does to you mentally um when i come out of the shower like I legit, I feel like anybody watch football, like Ray Lewis coming out of a tunnel. <laughs> Woo! Like every day to me, I try to create this process that it's a championship game. Like I'm not playing in the preseason. Like every day is a championship. Because if I play that way, if I play that way every day, man, my life is going to be what I want way faster than I could ever imagine. This ain't the preseason, bro. Like this is in a championship game every day. Is that's, it a, that's my morning. Is it as cold as you can stand? Yeah, and unfortunately, sometimes it's not that cold, um, you know, it, it, and depending where I go, right? So, like, I speak in Phoenix a lot, and for some reason, the water doesn't get cold there. Um, so, I'll have to, like, you know, open up the, the doors and try to get some cold air. But, yeah, man, as cold as I can stand, like, 
it's so yeah. it's it's good cold cold shower in florida is like room temperature so jamie that's why it's hard for you right now because you're in canada i know <laughs> yeah yeah for, well for you you just go ahead and jump into a big snow pile you'll be good <laughs> <laughs> awesome thanks for the question man what else we got guys i love this who's got a question don't be shy don't be shy don't be shy I'll ask you a question. Go ahead, man. <laughs> and I, 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 with questions, I never want to be like the, the generic questions or anything like that. But um, what do you think? Because I, I feel like I have some similar characteristics as, as you. Like I'm, and I'm not saying you're OCD, but I, I feel like addiction, I have a bit of those tendencies too. I get like, if I'm interested in something, I'm like really interested in something and have a tough time getting away from it. And that's yeah. good and bad, right? Like yep. great for business, <laughs> not so good for some other things. Yep. Um, where, how did you harness that? Like, how did you, at what point in your life, or maybe there was a person or an event where you were like, you know what? I gotta, I gotta flip the direction that I'm going. And like, what was that? Was it something someone said or a person? Yeah. So <clears throat> the funny thing about my addiction is, is I actually, so <laughs> get real seriously, guys, I was on the run for, for almost a year. Wow. Uh, yes. Yeah, so I was on a run for a year and I, I was in hiding uh, right before I went to jail because I had worn out and all this crazy stuff. And just to let you know, the first day I got out, which I'm gonna tell you guys a story real quick. All right. So first day I get out of hiding, I've been in for a year, dude, been in for a year. I get out. Of course I go to the club. You know, I went to Jer I'm in Jersey. I go to the club on the beach and, uh, there's this dude that's staring at me and he's like six, four, you know, I'm, I'm a very tall five, seven and a half. And so he's, he's staring at me and you know, uh, no, it was, it was not karma or bamboo. It was Jenks uh, in Point Pleasant. And I went up to the guy and I was, you know, John Marone back then. I said, Hey, what I always said back then, either we could handle this, or you could stop looking at me, but one of those two things are going to happen right now. And so he said, well, you know who this guy is? And it was the guy that I got into a fight with. I got jumped at a bar and defended myself, but I hurt somebody really bad. And so he showed me him and I, I'm like, oh my God. And we talked, it was the guy's best friend. The first night I went out after being in hiding for a year and we were good until 30 minutes later, he threw me into a cop out of nowhere and said, this is John Marone. He's got a warrant out for his arrest. And I got locked up like that. Um, so yeah, but going back to the story, so I was in hiding. And so that helped me with my addiction and, and get out of it. Um, and I thought I was over it, but I, I wasn't necessarily over it. I was trying to get back in it. And my wife being there, I had to take care of her essentially. Um, and so my personality wouldn't allow me to truly self-destruct if I knew that she'd be on the receiving end of that blow up. So that helped a lot, a lot. Um, and when I finally made the shift, um, honestly, it was about two years ago, man, three years ago, where, where I just... I just saw where I was at in my life and I realized like if, if, if I just truly take this, this addiction um, and, and switch it and see people that there's actually a, you could create a great life if you just put your addiction in the right energy. And that happened because I was having so many people come up to me during events and be like, oh, as I said before, I'm sorry, man, I know you're an addict. Hey, my friend was that, my this, my that. And it was just a somber feeling when I was just trying to express my story and then I switched it to be like, ah, don't feel bad for me. Like, I, like call me an idiot for using, you know, my addiction of a superpower to the wrong things for so long. Right. And so that's kind of the, the shift of it. But for you and anybody out there who are like, you're, you are an addict of some sort. So you're always focused, but you know, it could kind of take you down a rabbit hole. Um, set timers, set timers. Like, you know, you bro. So the best, uh, most people who grow, they know themselves and you got to be honest with you. Like, so, you know, if you're about to go down a rabbit hole, okay, I'm going to watch this YouTube video for 20 minutes, set an annoying ass timer that just goes off after 20 minutes. Uh, I'm a huge, of course, I don't have any now because my daughter probably took them all, um, post-it guy. So, like, I will put a post-it, like, get off Facebook. So, like, when I'm on her and if I'm on her, oh, your, your daughter's more important than Facebook. It's like, oh, and go back to my, what I was doing. So, I do little triggers like that as well. Just, it just helps me. Uh, stay aligned because the human nature, we get distracted, man. It's so easy for us. There's a, there's a question in the chat. What advice would you have for people that are shy? Okay. Uh, can I, can I unmute you? Cecile? Cecile, are, are you, can you unmute yourself? 
I'll try to find her and see if she uh, I can unmute her. Hold on. Like the worst thing to do to a I'm here. Person. Hi, Cecile. Here. How are you? I'm okay. Thank you. You're okay. All right. I'm good. You're good. All right. We're, I'm good. We're trying to make you great. Um, so what advice would you give to a shy? How come you're shy? I don't know. I've always kind of been that way. I guess it's just my personality. What do you mean by shy, right? Because I think everybody has a different definition of shy. Um, like a, a lot of stuff in this business is um, posting on Facebook, like uh, live messages and stuff like that. And it's just kind of stuff like that. I don't know what to say. I can't see myself doing that stuff, but I, I want to do it. Maybe it's just fear of judgment. Mm. Okay. Why do you want to do it though? I mean, there's so many different opportunities you can probably take where you don't have to put yourself out there on social media. Why, why is it important for you to, to, to create income from this? Well, I want to help people. Um, most of all, I love the fitness business. I want to inspire people, that sort of thing. And uh, so the reason why I ask you that is, is I would even go deep, a level deeper with you. You know, you want to inspire people. There's some people on here that probably don't, they just want to make money. They're just being real. Why do you want to inspire people versus just make money? What's why, why is that so important to you? Because if people have inspired me and I want to pay it forward to other people. Like when? Well, I'm working on it slowly, but <laughs> no, no, no. When did somebody inspire you? Oh, well coming into this business, like Kim was a mentor for me and, and I just let her, I'm like, but her energy, all of that, like she was so inspiring and that's what really pulled me into this. I already had like fitness background and always oh, interested in fitness, but she just really pulled me into like, I can, you know, I want to do this too. Yeah. So being shy is a choice. I'm just like, it, it, it's a choice. So there's, there, yeah, there, there's a way to, to say, okay, I'm shy, uh, uh, I'm introvert, like whatever that case is, that's fine. You could be an introvert. Um, it's funny enough, I am, uh, but I'm also weirdly an extrovert at the same time. It's strange. But for you, your shyness is a choice. What you really have a problem with, it's not that you're shy, you have a fear of judgment. And the most confident person, the person who's the most energy in the room, they also have the fear of judgment. Because the, the, the fear of judgment is real, but the fear of judgment brings a deeper fear. And that fear of judgment usually is like a fear of disappointment, like feeling not good about yourself, maybe not taking care of your family the way you wanted to because you thought it was going to bring extra income. But the people who are going to judge you, who are they? I really don't know. Probably people don't really matter, but I don't know. I just like, even just having this a conversation with you, I'm like, my heart's like pounding and it's just like, it, you know what I mean? Like, it's, yeah, that's growth for me. This is awesome. Though. I'm so glad that, that, that you got unmuted and we're chatting about it because this is growth. So I'm not asking you to go ahead and post a million videos tomorrow. I'm telling you to do one. Okay. okay? Then do one in the next week and talk to one person different than you normally know speak to tomorrow. Just slowly, gradually get yourself out there because if you say you want to inspire people and you want to help people, you could only do that by contacting them and whether it's virtual or it's actually pick up the phone and you want to change their life, wanting and doing are different things, right? So you have to put aside the fear of judgment because those who judge you, listen guys, those who are judging you are doing two things. One, they're spewing their own insecurities on you. And two, they would never step foot in the arena. Those who judge me, some who used to be very good friends, and hate on me, it's because they're, they're in the stands. They're in the bleachers. I'm in the arena fighting. They're not. And guess what? When my bills pile up, guess what happens? They ain't going to be there. So why would I care about them? I lost some people that were in my, in my wedding. Why? Why? Because they, they, they were saying, oh, man, John Marone, man, you know, he's, he's an addict. He's this, he's that. How is he going to coach people? Oh, why? Because you're sitting home making your 40, 50, 60, $70,000 a year and you feel like you're stuck, you're gonna spew your insecurities all over me? Nah, I'm sorry, but your fear does not control my life. Hear me, their fears cannot control your life, Cecile. Don't let it, because then it affects your family and that's when shit gets serious, right? Like, that's when it gets serious. And, and those, those issues who try to bring you down, guess what, they're usually, Ready beneath you and it's sad to say because i've had to learn to love people from afar and set these emotional guardrails you know in, in the space i'm in i get i get a lot of hate but i get so much more love 
Like, think about that. So, see, think about how many people that you could change their life and the messages you can get that could bring so much inspiration back into your life. It's going to outweigh anybody that wants to put hate and judgment into you. I promise. But you could only do it one step at a time. Make a commitment to yourself, Cecile, that you're going to go ahead and post a video tomorrow. And tell me right now you're going to do it. Do you accept that challenge? I accept the challenge. Thank you. Let's grow, baby. Let's grow. (laughs) Hey, tag me in it, too. I'm going to share it. I'm going to go ahead and put all love on it. Tag me in it. Okay. Yes. Yes. (laughs) I appreciate your vulnerability. That was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. You'll, yeah, Cecile, you'll never be judged by someone more successful than you. No. No, you'll get feedback from them, yep. but you won't be judged. It's awesome. Yes, Lisa awesome. Webb said Brene Brown. Yes, that was a little Brene Brown. She's my it, girl right there. It's funny though, right, John? Like, I think the perception from people is that successful people on social media or motivation or whatever the industry you're in, it's like you're the everyone. So I'm, I'm like you. I'm, I'm like a situational extrovert. Like, if you ask my wife, if she tells me we're going to a party, I'm like, oh, who's going to be there? Who's like, I get nervous about it, but like people see me on these team calls speaking, but this isn't about being an introvert or being shy. I think it's about knowing what you want, Cecile, and like understanding that the people who are judging you, honestly, who you, it's like, I always talk about cousin Becky, like, (laughs) You never talked to Cousin Becky anyway, and Cousin Becky has never taken a chance on anything in her effing life. But uh-huh. it's, it's really easy to judge. Like, it requires no skill or talent to judge what someone's doing. Yeah. None. It, it, you know, and like I said, it's just their insecurity spewing all over, all over you. Um, you know, it's unfortunate, you know, because you will get judged, Cecile. You're not going to get away from that. Yeah. Embrace it. Embrace it. And sometimes you get, you get judged from, from people that are near you and you know, it sucks. Uh, but their yells turn to whispers. I promise their yells will turn to whispers. The more you put the work in because success creates distance, but from the right people, it, it, it will start to fade. You know, I still see people make little comments from my past. Yeah. That John Marone back then, of course he shouldn't have been coaching. Yeah. He should, shouldn't be speaking on stages, but guess what? It's a different person. Cecile is different right now than you were 10 minutes ago yes and i love it we got any other um, questions here. i love this man so i'm mean, like i said if you guys got to go you can go but you want to do one more question yeah let's do it who's got one guys i'm loving this unmute yourself and let's do it hey john. Awesome. what's going on jen how are Hi. you good how I, are you I, amazing Thank you so much for today. This was like an amazing call. So my question for you is like, I feel like I'm chatting with a lot of people right now and I have people in my life too, who they're nowhere near where I'm at, like, like in that personal development journey. So when you have someone who's starting at zero, when you have someone who really just feels like, you know, they don't know where to start. What do you recommend? Like, there's so much, and I know, like, I've done the habit stacking, and I'm sure a lot of people on this team have and stuff, but, like, where do you recommend that someone begins when they want to kind of get started on changing things? You know, that's a great question, and, and I appreciate it because I think uh, that's, that's something that we all suffer with, whether it's, it's like we fell back into a bad habit or we're starting brand new. Um, so the, the first thing is dropping one old bad habit to pick up one new one. Don't try to pick up five new ones, right? So we only have so much capacity in our life and in our energy. So we have to create that capacity. We got to create that opportunity. So the only way to do that is to lose something. You know, you got to lose something to gain something. And then that's that's step one. Step two um, is getting them clearly defined on their goals. Like it's simple and stupid as it is. If you get them clearly defined on their goals, but the most important part, as I said earlier, is the emotion behind it. You know, somebody's goal is not to lose weight. It's all that losing weight is to drive an emotion. That's it. It's a vehicle to drive them to an emotion. So anybody on a self-improvement journey, like we all should be every single day, it's like, what do you want? And why do you want it? And what kind of emotion will it bring you? Because success is nothing but doing the shit that we don't want to do when we know we need to do it. When motivation leaves your body, your destiny is shape. When motivation leaves your body, your destiny is shape. We all can go ahead and, and, you know, have this amazing lifestyle if we were always motivated. 
but we're not. We're probably like 30% motivated, if that's even like maybe 25%. So it's what we do when we're not motivated. Right? That shapes our destiny. So, and the reason why we'll take action when we're not motivated, Jen, is because we have that strong emotion tied to why we're doing something. Okay. Um, the third thing I would say is accountability. Like whether it's you, somebody else, that you got to form an accountability group and, and that person has to be okay with hearing things they don't want to hear, but they need to hear. Um, and, and so those, those are three big things. Um, and then last but not least, is just get them into personal development, not by going ahead and finding 10 people he likes and you know, wants to follow or she likes, wants to follow three. Don't follow more than three. Uh, like follow, but like I'm saying, like don't digest so much content because we live in this, uh, there might be kids on here, so I won't say the word, but we live in this information uh, world um, and we need to live in an implementation world. And, and the reason why we live in this information world is there's more information coming our way now than there's ever been before. And confused minds don't take action, Jen. So if I'm getting something from Ed Milet, I'm getting something from Jamie, I'm getting something from ET, I'm getting something from Tony, I'm getting something all of a sudden, I promise you, their messages will, will start to kind of really fight each other. And I don't know what to do. And then I sit in this, in this fear and this crippling of just, right, I'm not going to do anything. And so tell them to find the top three people that vibe with them, right? Like your vibe attracts your tribe. You've all heard it before. Find three people that you really like jive with. I'm not telling you got to ride with that person for the rest of your life. I mean, I, I fell off some people here and there. It's, you're supposed to. Uh, but find three people that you look up to and you want to emulate and then you digest their content and then you just take massive, aggressive, empowering action daily. Does that help? Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you. John, we were way over our time, but man, I, um, I just appreciate everything you shared. And, and I mean, and this is, I, I, I hope at some point during this, what are we hour and 20 minutes? I hope at some point, our coaches on our team and our business partners, like John is, is just spreading value. He's just pouring into our team. He doesn't have to, like, there's no gain necessarily. I mean, there is, you know, but like, this is what we do as coaches. It's not always about a sale. It's not always about getting someone, signing someone up, recruiting. You have to give value to people in life, in business, in a relationship, in your marriage. We're always working on that. Um, Aren't we all? But like that is where that energy cup, you know, it goes back and forth and it's just, you just got to keep filling each other's cup and, and like John, awesome call, man. Like I'm just so, so appreciative of your time and for spending this with us. And I think everyone is like, I can see the chats blowing up and stuff. So um, thank you, sir. Absolutely. I would say one quick thing, if you don't mind, you know, I don't okay. shut up anyway. Um, you just said it before, man. A lot of us have a money problem, we think, right? Man, my bills are piling up. I have a money problem. I have a money problem. You don't have a money problem. You have a you problem. See, money is the side effect to your habits. Money is a side effect to the character that you are. Money is a side effect to the value that you add. If you look at your bank account, it'll reflect how many lives that you're changing. Stop going for the money. The money will be a side effect to everything else that truly matters, which is actually the most beautiful part. Hey, John. So hey. I had to go halfway out and lead another team call. And I was like, literally dreading leaving this call. I was like dripping on to, I have a uh, Evernote of notes from the first like eight minutes. And it is like two pages deep. So I can't wait to come back and watch this call. Awesome. And I want to just, even Jamie and I were just chatting when you were answering Jen's question. And I was like, he's so good. Like, <laughs> Thank you. Oh my gosh. And so I, guys, I hope you rewatch this. I hope you take notes. I hope you um, follow John. I, I can't wait to be connected on social media. I'm so excited. Um, where can everyone find yeah. you? What, what, where do people need to hear more of you? Yes. Thank you for the opportunity too. Um, so at real John Marone, uh, somebody took the real, I guess. Um, so it's just <laughs> at real John Marone, M-A-R-R-O-N-E. Um, and that's on Facebook. Just look up John Marone. My YouTube, 
Just look up John Marone. You'll see me on YouTube. Uh, my podcast that Jamie talked about before, Power of Progression. Um, and, and the whole goal of that is to talk about the story behind the glory of my guest, um, some phenomenal people. And then I have my own single uh, person episodes as well. Um, and then you can definitely go ahead and just check out my website, johnmarone.com. So johnmarone.com. There's programs on there. There's all this stuff. But just check it out. And if you have any, you know, questions or maybe you didn't want to get too vulnerable on here and, and you really want to dive a little bit deeper, uh, shoot me a DM and we can definitely chat. I would love to be able to add value to you and, and, and serve whoever it is that needs to be served and empower you guys. Uh, but, you know, guys, I appreciate the opportunity. I really do. Um, you know, this is, this is what I love to do. Um, and, and, it's, and it's because of this, that ripple effect I talked about. So whatever I provided to you guys, if you could just do me a favor, actually, um, and share something that you learned today with somebody that you know might need to hear it. Um, and maybe you don't know anybody that needs to hear it. Share it with the world on Instagram. <laughs> and I bet you somebody of your, of your uh, listeners or viewers will need to hear it. Um, and, and just do me that favor. You know, Pat instilled that into me years and years ago. Um, and, and so I want to continue paying him back uh, by, by asking everybody I work with just to provide value to others. You know, let's add value. Let's make a difference. Let's, let's really connect in this time and, and uh, help people um, really overcome whatever it is that they're needing to overcome because, uh, you know, people help people, believe it or not. And it's up to us to go ahead and, and continue that mission. It's, it's so clear you love what you do. And that's the other lesson from this, guys. No, honestly, like you can just tell you this, you love this. And I think as a business person, guys, it's not always about income. That's like, it, that's the side effect. Love what you do. And that's so clear. John, thank you so much, buddy. Yeah, we appreciate appreciate it. you. Thank you guys. I'll see you soon. Thanks, yeah. John. Appreciate it.